You're listening to another Woodshop podcast, the OKS podcast of its type. Your hosts are Daniel Dunlap of Daniel Dunlap Woodworks, Peter Kapar of Petrie's Workshop, and Braden Bokes of Little Bug Woodworking. You can find them as well as the podcast on your favorite social media channels. Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 227 of Another Woodshop Podcast. Coming back at you with an oldie but goodie. He's grown immensely in the makerspace, becoming our go-to resource for saving money on outfitting our shop with tools. Also professional projects on a budget, helping us select tools with confidence and supplying us with super useful 3D printed accessories for all those tools. Here to promote his debut rap, rap album named Cutting Board Awareness Month, please help me welcome Drew Witt of Witworks. Woo! What's up, Drew? I like that album is gonna be fire. That did, album's did, fire. Uh, did AI write that? That was... No, oh, that's all me, baby. That's oh, PC. Wow. That's how yeah. bad I thought it. That's how bad it was. I <laughs> yeah, thought I was like, AI oh, wrote it. Because I would have it, the AI correct <laughs> I mean, it next time. <laughs> with Cutting Board yeah. Awareness Month, we had to bring on Drew, right? It Featuring was Bossa Nova. Mah, 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 mah. Is, yeah. Oh, wait, I have the thing. <laughs> yeah, I got it. I got to actually use it. <laughs> is it the first time you've used that? I, it's, it's the first time he's used it without me. panicking and saying, oh, shoot, I forgot to turn the volume up. <laughs> yeah. Why is it not working? My soundboard's crashing. Speaking of... Dan, are Braden's? <laughs> oh, Braden's reading them this week. <laughs> we're gonna hit him with the re- we're gonna hit him with the remix. Wait, Braden, say the word. Our patrons. There it is. <laughs> patrons. Do you have the I list? I can't get any higher than that. Uh, we have two new patrons this week, as far as I can tell. Because oh, yep, nope. Dates say correct. So we have Nick. P. Daniel, who is not an AI generated person named after Nick Brim, uh, Peter Kapar, and Daniel Dunlap. He is a real guy. I've met him. Uh, so we've got Nick Daniel, Allegedly. and then we've got Greg, <laughs> pronounce Jesevich. We got Greg Jesevich. My people. Those are uh, those are our new patrons this month. And then if I click this button, because this is my first time doing this ever. Okay. I drew uh, we right have the bus. We have our you're sexy when you're nervous patrons <laughs> who are the sexiest of patrons, the uh, the Drew Wits of patrons, you might say. Some might say. Nobody said no, no, it, Nobody no one might. says that. No one says that. We have uh, Damon from BWG Woodworking, Jeremy Claybaugh, uh, Woodwork and Weld, Etsy Bleeping Mother Bleeper. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> His, Alex Adams. About that. That, that person has used Etsy before. <laughs> uh, oh, you haven't heard my Etsy story yet, Drew. <laughs> John Herpelsheimer. <laughs> Jared Lapuma of LL Builds Woodworking. Tyler Booth of Temecula the Yard Games. Henry Lutens. Charlie Coons. Justin Fraser Canyon Woodworks. Sarah Rose Goldstein with Rosie's Row Row Workshop. Uh, Michael at Gillette Woodworks. El Jefe of Maker's Way, Wim Designs, Nipples Deep in Cutting Boards. <laughs> that is Nick Brim. Oh my uh, Max and Liz Reed of Reed Design Co. Bill Burkle of WPB, uh, WTB Woodworking. Uh, Jake Conneen of Dobby's Craft House. Drew and the Dimwits. That's Patrick Genzel. Wow. All right. Ed Mancini of Mancini Woodworking. Chris of Chris Will Make. Where's my apple pie, Sarah? Uh, Scott Stop. Shirk is still not forgiven. Uh, Max and Minnie Coons of Stubby K Studio Beasts. And Justin Bailey of Campfire Outside Woodworking Incorporated. Ooh. Very mm, good. Sexy crowd. Good job, Braden. How'd I do? Good How'd job. I do? That's good. Well, now Attic what about wins. the people that aren't signed up, Braden? Like, what do you do now? Well, if you're oh. not signed up, you can go to patreon.com slash another woodshop podcast and you can sign up for one of our many, many tiers of patronage, including a free tier, which gives you a crisp handshake 
when you first meet us. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Christmas. yeah. Christmas. Oh, yeah. But if you want the butt taps, five dollars here. Five dollars here. At and least. it just goes up Minimum. from there. It and then there's a secret. There. There's a sick, secret fifth tier that only Nick Brim is in. The the nips, the nips, the nips and nips, the brims. The nips and the brims tier, but that's a special one. You got to be yeah. in a fourth fourth level tier and then also uh, have enough beers in each other's I, shops before. Well, I think you, get you have there. to be fourth level for uh, at least a year. Yeah, yeah. You well, can it's graduate like the Illuminati. You have to be a certain level before you're right. like a grand master or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you can't <laughs> just tier. be the Pope. You got to be a cardinal for a while. Oh, I like that. That's a good reference. Fifth level <laughs> tier gets you access to the YouTube video of us recording the podcast semi nude. We re record the entire thing word for word, but <laughs> no shirts. So, but it's through. us reading, so it's way more right awkward away. and we stumble over the words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> te -he, te -he. <laughs> <laughs> it's the. so brisk in here. Well, okay, well, thank you to all our patrons for sponsoring the show. And we want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor sponsoring the show this week, who is also a patron. See how that all comes full circle in the sixth tier of AWP. Uh, this is WTB Woodworking, Bill Burkle and his brainchild, the shop he opened up in uh, Huntingdon Valley. It's not Huntington. It's Huntingdon Valley, PA. The store is now open. We did the uh, grand opening a couple weeks ago and Bill's got no chill. I'm going to say that. He's got all the major brands. He When he, he did the opening, he had Festival there. He had Saw Stop there. All the reps were there uh, representing it. There's Lamello. You can get Type Bond. You can get Epoxy, everything. Of course, what he also Miles does. What about Milescraft? Does he have Milescraft there? Well, Dan, I'm glad you asked. They have Micro Jig now, the gooder of those. <laughs> the gooder one. <laughs> the gooder one. They, do just, uh, they just got Micro Jig. They also got pika pencils also known as pika pencils if you're into pokemon and um what's the last thing there was one more thing i'm blanking on it that's fine we'll talk about it next week but mm. bill's Micro really Jake. blowing up his uh his shop and here's the thing if you're not in pennsylvania we hear you we hear you bill started a website he's got all these amazing goodies on his site and right now he's running a special giveaway he's giving away a um it's a festal drill. I'm, I'm blanking on the name. What? I should probably pull it. I know it's crazy. So he's uh, giving away a festal drill. And I hear there's a word on the street that he might be throwing in some batteries and a charger as well on that. So oh, snap. yeah. So it's the Very cordless good. drill, the quad drive TPC 1840i basic. Yeah. So he I might can't be throwing believe you didn't in. have that memorized. What's his website? It. What's his website? Uh, it's wtbwoodworking.com slash giveaway if you want to go straight to the the source there not um, wicked no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> um so definitely check out the site and if you are in the area I highly recommend stopping by checking out the showroom and seeing if there is any in-person specials that they might be running so if there's any sales and stuff like that they might be able to do some stuff in in store that they can't do online make sure to check them out and uh also they do a lot of slabbing custom orders and plywoods and woods so go check them out or it's order one online stop shop one-stop shop that's where i got my um my uh, bits and bits ultimate flush trim bit and Ooh. i'm still scared to use it it's still there i haven't is that the big boy the, that's the, the bit big... i got the big Ooh. boy yeah, yeah nice. it's spooky i'm not like i don't know if my router is going to be able to handle it but we'll so see so you're saying that we can purchase both in person and on the world wide web yes yeah at least the american world wide web yeah. Until it all falls apart. I, yeah. I hear the internet's a fad anyway. Yeah, it it's a fad. So make sure to stay tuned. There might be some specials maybe just for uh, AWP listeners. We'll see you in the future. Ooh. But make sure to go sign up for that giveaway right now. It ends on December 13th. So uh, he's going to be doing a live on December 14th. And you'll be able to find out if you won. Pete, will all these links be in the show notes? Son, all these links, these kids just have to remember one. WTBwoodworking.com and it's in the, in the show notes. Boom. Man. Boom. Look at that. And if you use code AWP, you won't save it, anything, it but adds, you'll confuse Bill. So it adds Illinois tax for some reason <laughs> on top of wherever. Whatever state you're in. Uh, well, speaking of uh, things that are amazing, Drew, hello. Who's our guest next week? Drew, no, oh. it's Drew Witt again. Oh, oh got, it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Drew Witt is joining us back. Drew was back here on episode 150. And if you want a nice contrast episode, make sure to listen to that one. <laughs> this is those 77 episodes ago, a year and a half ago, and a lot has changed. So Drew, for those of us that 
maybe listen to you back then and haven't really been following along or they're first time listeners to you, give us the spiel, give us the elevator pitch. Who the hell do you think you are? What was the date on that? Do you know the date? April 8th? Okay. 1964. Of 2023, <laughs> either 6th or 8th, something like that. Our patrons. Wow. So mid-April. Interesting. Wow. I, was, I tried to figure out what was I doing in my life then? You were just what, getting who, started. A young upstart. You were born just... a poor child on the east side of the Mississippi. <laughs> yeah, the west side, but yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, technically he's west, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or literally. So what, who are what you? I, what is it you actually I? do here? It's a good question. I have been making YouTube videos about quasi woodworking since February of 2021. And so coming up on four years, which is uh, kind of crazy to think about. Like, I didn't think I'd make it this far. So in the mean, in the very early on, I had to, I started learning, how do you make money doing this? And I realized the YouTube algorithm is a cruel mistress and mm -hmm. is very volatile. And so trying to live on AdSense is not a good um, strategy for peace or having money at all. And it kind of accidentally started a 3D printing tool company. Hey, stay in um, your lane. I didn't, I didn't know you existed then. No, go on. You make way better stuff than me. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, like I, my favorite, actually, I, I don't think I've ever told this publicly. When I first bought my first 3D printer, which was a crappy Ender, because um, I didn't know any better, Oh, I think it was November of 2022, I believe. And um, I had $200 in my business bank account, like my side hustle bank account. And the printer costs like $350 with all the upgrades and the film and everything. And I have never carried a balance on a credit card ever in my life. I always just have an auto pay and we have tried to stay out of debt. So I was like, how do I pay this? Like I have 30 days to figure out how to make enough money to pay for this 3D printer. Hmm. And so I um, had seen people um, put blue painter's tape over their track saws in videos uh, to cover the arbor cap pole. And I thought my my uh, neighbor had a 3D printer and he was talking about, it. I was like, I wonder if you can make a cap that snaps in there. And then it turns out people had been trying, had been doing it. And I was like, well, I can just take better product photos because of my background. <laughs> so I designed one. I found a Makita filament that looked close, took really good photos. And that month on Etsy, and I'd never sold anything on Etsy. I uploaded to Etsy. And like the next day I had a, one sale. I was so pumped. Like, do you Isn't it the best Etsy feeling? Sale? Yeah, it's your best one. <laughs> I think that, so that month we sold $700 worth of these Makita track saw caps that for $10 each. And then I was able to, pay off the credit card and then the next month i bought a second ender so i could have a black filament uh i was tired of changing filaments and then <laughs> is so, that what people do you just have you just buy another printer yeah oh Instead man changing, yeah you just buy another printer by the way backstory dan realized last week that you can unload filament he would just run roll through it's his first <laughs> printer it's fine although it's okay. ironically drew bought a second printer so that he could do exactly what dan was doing yeah. dan's just ahead yeah. of the curve oh once you get to the point where you could just do like different printer for different colors you know you made it it's the best yeah dan just started out in production mode yeah that's good that's a good way to put it actually <laughs> it's good yeah i think at one i think about six months in i had eight enders working pretty full time on all you know multiple colors and um they're really slow so you need a lot of them to keep up with demand and then as my and then as my youtube channel started getting traction i started driving more traffic and then i was like oh i could actually make a living off of this wow and here we are you know three years after that point and i have three employees now we're building our own shop we moved out to the country so we could build our own building and yeah, it's like wake up and I'm like, oh my gosh, did that really happen? Like, I own a tool company and a media company, basically, um, but a lot of hard work, a lot of staying up till three in the morning and not making 
not making money for a long time. So and just to I be clear, these, em these employees are real people. They're not like personalities of Drew sort of thing, right? Yeah, it's not, you know, they're like, not AI. Like throw your voice. <laughs> <laughs> fun at games, fun at parties. <laughs> yeah, no, real, real, real Americans full, who are full time. So, job yeah. creator, baby. Yeah, job creator. Yeah, all U.S. citizens. They're all here legally. It's okay, guys. Calm down. Don't do any research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, okay. So I, I got another question. You asked. Uh, you, you mentioned media company, right? And I specifically remember from the last episode, you, you, you had a quote which was. You, you can't think like Jimmy Fallon. You think you got to think like the CEO Oprah. of CBS. And then we, we got it somehow got into Oprah. But it was you can't think like the talent. You got to think like the media company. And you just mentioned having a media company. And uh, like talk about how that mindset may have either changed or you've stayed consistent with it and what that's been like. Like what's your mindset behind it has always been? Yeah, so you can go two ways with something like YouTube or whatever Instagram, whatever like platform you choose. Um, and one is, is this a hobby or is this a business? And for most people, it's a hobby. And that's fine. Perfectly fine. For the people that want it to be business, you have to treat it like a business. And it's not your channel. I, I don't like the name channel for YouTube because a channel implies that you can have different shows on a channel. Um, and that's not how YouTube works. YouTube wants you to have one show. It should be your YouTube show. Um, the channels that consistently perform have one <clears throat> show like Blacktail Studio. There is like one type of video Cam makes over and over and over and over again. And then the analytics start compounding. Here's the biggest um, thing that I can make that you can't. Oh, episode yeah. 27. It's like oddly satisfying, expensive shit. That's <laughs> Cam Anderson. And that's from his mouth. That's not me making that up like He's figured that out. He's not a woodworking. He will say he's not a woodworking channel. He will say he's an oddly satisfying channel. That's what he is. Ooh, smooth. That, um, and then you look at channels that don't do that, that are trying to be a business. And if they, um, if they ha have too many directions, they don't gain the traction. So I now think of my YouTube channel as it's, I am making media for the internet and i have three kids <laughs> and a wife and it has to perform at a certain level um which it sounds crazy but i didn't know this till the other day um this is like i think i took a screenshot of it um i can pull up my youtube analytics i like where do i find it in the last 365 days, I've gained over 100,000 subscribers in the last year. Wow. And I think I'm at 5.9 million views, and I've uploaded six videos in the last year. That's I've good uploaded, traction. I've uploaded six videos in the last year, and I've grown over 100,000 subscribers in the last year. You do seem uh, to be performing with some good bangers. Like, you got a, a several that are over 500 plus K. Yeah. For, for things that and I mean this in the nicest way, I've seen before. So, like, what do you think your yeah. secret is? Oh, there's a lot there. I think, um, so every video that I do takes at least about two months to make. Um, there's a lot. Dan, of, Dan, you're right on track. Yeah, That's there's good. a lot of production yeah. involved. Mine's going to be there's really a, good. My, I'm, I'm up to eight months yeah. in my kitchen island build. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so typically there's like at least two weeks of pre-production and this is not efficient. This is just, I'm slow is two weeks of figuring out, does this, like if you were going to make a product you do and you're a good business person, you do some analysis of what's called TAM, the total addressable market. How many, how many people are interested in whiskey smokers, you know? And you try to figure out like, is there enough people interested in these things for me to like actually gain some market traction? So for a video idea, I'll do that. I'll try, there's a lot of ways you can do it, is to try to figure out what, what's the view potential for this type of video? And the cool thing about YouTube is the answers are there. The answers to, they give you the answers to the test. You just gotta know how to like read the test. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, does that make sense? Or do you, do you want an example for that? Yeah. 
it right, does, is... except every single person <clears throat> wants a whiskey smoker. They just haven't seen the demo yet. <laughs> True. <laughs> okay, but... th this this is my favorite. Um, this is my favorite test. So, and I think I learned this from Lincoln Street. I, th I think he's the one who like told me how to do this. So, John, two... John's a low key genius. We gotta have him back on. I want to be clear. I don't like him but he is the smartest guy on YouTube. No one likes John. We all just want him around for some reason. <laughs> I, I kind of like the guy. I, I, you right. know, I, I, I like him. He's, he is, um, without question, I believe, the smartest um, packager of making YouTube videos in the woodworking space, I think. It's a good so, way to put it. I'll, I'll give, you know, this isn't my, this uh, I paid money for his course to, to learn this. So, is if you go to Jason Hibbs's channel and you look at, you search by popular videos, you'll see his bangers. And what you'll find is there are several videos that are over a million views that are about building cabinets. And you're like, okay, he's got a million subscribers. And you note that. Let's go to a mid-sized channel. And then you can go to someone like Jason Bent, who's got 280, 280,000 subscribers, and you do the same thing. He's got several of his top videos are how to build cabinets. You're like, okay, cabinet video overperformed on that size channel. Then my favorite is you go to a small channel with like 5,000 subscribers and you look, and if they make a cabinet video and it overperforms, then you know it doesn't matter the size of the channel. People want to watch cabinet building videos. That video has a large TAM, total addressable market. So it's of no surprise that the video I did two months ago about cabinets is almost at 600,000 views. Not surprising to me. I knew it would. The video I did uh, a year ago is at 1.8 million views. It's about building cabinets. So a lot of times people are like, no one wants to see my stuff. And a lot of it is you're making videos most people don't care about. It turns out millions of people actually care about how to build good cabinets without spending a lot of money. So just, you know, do your version of it, you know, like an island um, or something, Pete, <laughs> like an island. Yeah. <laughs> be, be right back. A making cabinet, a cabinet with video. a top, <laughs> no, not uh, doing it, but upside down. You're hundred like, percent on when, when Malecki I had, has a video like that too. When I had 5,000 subscribers on YouTube, I made a, a cabinet video. It was just me modifying a cabinet, but that thing got 700,000 views yeah, when I was 5,000 yep. subscribers and I was nobody. I'm still a nobody, but no, still. Yeah. You're so, our so, nobody. <laughs> so the, the, the principle there is um, not all video ideas are created equal. And the idea of the video is the absolute most important thing. So if I were going to start a business, if I were going to start a media channel, if I were going to do anything, I would spend more time researching the biggest possible video ideas that would get higher return on my investment. And I would use my iPhone and a $100 mic. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't watch a single video about the best camera to buy. None of it matters. If you have an iPhone, I, I still use an iPhone 11. Can you 11. say that one more time to everyone listening? Just that yeah, last like, line. Like, don't waste your money on cameras. Like, most of my videos, the B-roll is my iPhone 11. And it, that's plugged in because the battery sucks. <laughs> so With just it, the thickest booty on that thing. It is, Good yeah. Lord. That's a battery-powered case because by 11... It's dead, but I have an <laughs> iPhone 11 and I shoot a lot of my videos with an iPhone 11, not like my main shots, but like my point of view shots. And people don't like at some point, good enough is good enough. <clears throat> and it's the idea. It's the story. It's what you're saying. That is the most important thing. So I spend more time vetting that than, than anything. Um, and then, of course, there's like lots of time in building whatever. Like the cabinet video I just referenced, I think that took me three weeks of building those cabinets and filming them, which slows everything down. And then I think it took two weeks to edit it. So um, some might say like, yeah, you spent at least six weeks on one video. That is crazy, but it's less than two months old and it has over 600,000 views. That's fantastic. And, you know, 
it, it, and it just continues to get, um, it's just, so that has really helped that mindset of this is a media company. And so let me, let me treat it like that. Let me treat it like I'm an executive producer or I'm a director, not a guy making a YouTube video. Um, and it took a while for me to like learn that and to keep that. And every once in a while, like I'd make a video and it would get 600,000 views and I would think, oh, I can dig. And then I do like a crappy video and I don't do any of the hard work and it gets 10,000 views and then dies. And I realize like what happened? I didn't put the work in, you know, and then I have to unlist it and have to go back to my ways and work really, really hard again. But doing that for the last, I say I've really had that mindset since last summer. So the last probably 15, 16 months and it, my channel was in the crapper when I started that. And now it's like, wow, I think this month I've done 900,000 views and gained almost 17,000 subscribers. That's fantastic. Th this month. And I published a video two weeks ago and it's doing okay. It's not doing awesome, but it's doing okay. So it's just I, like, okay. It's that's, not doing it's awesome. It's at 188,000 views. It's the bamboo one, right? Is it at 188? 188, man. You haven't even looked really? at it. Yeah, you're kidding. I it. love that video. That video helped <laughs> me out a lot. Really good. Yeah, I even grabbed my phone and I rewound it and I took a, a picture of my my screen because I don't know how to do screen grabs. I'm yeah. an old boomer. <laughs> <laughs> Where so, you, you listed the settings for 3D printing your initial <laughs> yeah, layers. Yeah. I was like, oh, man. And I've implemented that and I've had no problems ever since good, then. Good, good. Well, Drew, I want to challenge you on something because obviously, you know, that's always stuck with me to like think of like a, you're a media company, like in, you're not the talent. But what if you are the talent or at one po what point can you also become the talent? Because I go to your channel, not about, not for your videos. I go to your channel because I like you. I want to hear you talk in monotone for 30 minutes about something <laughs> I mildly care about. I, I'm there for, for, for you and you, you know, like, and I mean that in the nicest way, like you have this monologue that is like very four eyes style. And, and you just, you talk about life. You talk about the project, you talk about things. It's not just here I made the cut and then I assembled and then I got my pocket hole jig. Like you actually, you're talking about, sometimes it's just straight up BS. I don't care. I'm in it. I'm in <laughs> it. it. And it's not like, it's like the Jason Hibbs, like very monotone that I went over and did like, but somehow I'm watching and I'm engaged. Like I want to challenge that because I think at some point you are the talent whether it's right out of the gate or like at some point you become established, you start, you know, you produce, you're producing great content. I'm not disputing that, but you're I mean, also a talent on top of that. If you're going to be in front of the camera, you have to show the talent as well. For sure. More leg. Yeah. Show more leg. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> so what's your take I, on so, that? So, well, I, that, I never struggled with that. I, in my past, you know, I was a pastor for 20 years, so I had to write a sermon every seven days and hold people's attention for 20 to 30 minutes in person every seven days for 20 years. That sounds awful. So, and I just have to know, do it every two months. Yeah. I was going to say, so he's doing this at once every seven days, but now we've got to wait six weeks for a new yeah, video. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> seven times better. Now <laughs> it, it turns out it's way harder to do things online because people can just like skip, when when you make the effort to go somewhere in person, you sit down and you don't like what's happening, it takes a lot for you to have to stand up and walk out in front of a lot of people. So it's a lot harder. You have to put in a lot more work. But I I never struggled with like the talking or the story. That was one of my that was one of my uh, unfair advantages, so to speak, is a lot of woodworking videos are boring. They're not funny. And the pacing is awful. And I thought, well, what's my like? I'm not a great woodworker, um, but I am a great storyteller. Like I made a living for 20 years publicly communicating and inspiring people. That's what I need to do. It took me a while to figure out the business side of that um, because there's. it doesn't matter how good of that you have. If you don't know how to get YouTube to share your video, no one's clicking in and finding you. So it took a while for me to figure out what YouTube actually wants. And then once I started giving YouTube what they wanted, then they started sharing my thumbnail to people. Um, 
Because it turns out, like most people do not watch woodworking videos to learn um, woodworking. Most people are watching for mostly for entertainment. To now they might, asleep. yeah, to fall asleep or just like it's Sunday and they don't want to watch like cable TV. They want to watch like what did Hibbs do or what did Maleki do? Yep. What did, you know, what did Cam do? And it, it now are they going to take, are they going to learn? Yeah, they're going to learn. Yeah. Are they going to pick up some tips? Yeah. But it's not search based how to content that they're looking for. Most people, the, the majority of people. Um, and that was the mistake I made for a year and a half was I was making how to videos I was making search-based how-to videos, and I realized that's one part of YouTube, the search bar. The other part of YouTube is the browse and suggested, and that is where all the views are. And so I, I had to learn about video ideas and then titles and thumbnails and then the first 30 seconds and all that stuff, um, it, and it actually matters. Um, so I'll spend more time... Um, like yesterday, I spent two hours writing the first 30 seconds of my next video. And wow. I just kept rewrite, rewrite, and rewrite it. And I have four thumbnail options. And then, you know, so because the majority, this sounds crazy, but but if you think about it logically, the majority of the people who watch the video are going to watch the first three seconds. But the majority of people will not watch the last three minutes of the video. And so if there is a part of the video to spend the most time on, it's the part that most people will see, which is the first 30 seconds. So I, that's the stuff I've had to learn how to do and it's work, but, um, it's paying off. Um, thankfully. Sounds like glad it. it glad, glad it is. So would you say it's more, you're trying to focus more on like how I blank instead of how to like how I've done how I did this thing or how, what I think of this thing and how I fixed it. Yeah. I, I think the deepest part, like, you know, people talk about find your why mm. I am the most happiest when I am one making something, when I'm being creative and constructive that's when I'm the most happiest. And two, when I'm helping other people. So what I try to do with my videos is show people how to make things so that they might be happier with themselves. And whenever I am showing, whenever I'm making and helping people, I am happy and I have joy. So it kind of like, it's not necessarily about, like I'm not a cabinet channel, I'm not a tour view channel. I'm a, I'm happy when I'm making things channel and I want you to be happy too. So that kind of like is like the really, really deep philosophical reason of why I'm still doing it when it's just hard work at this point is my favorite things are when I get messages from people showing me pictures of like a plan they, they bought from me that they built <laughs> or Another thing I get all the time is I'll say the person who works with their mind has to rest with their hands and over and over and over again, people message me and be like, oh my gosh, I'm a lawyer. I'm a doctor. I'm yeah. an IT professional. And I got into woodworking for the exact same reason you're talking about. I needed, I needed to relax. And that's what woodworking does for me. So they're not even doing it. They're doing it for therapy, really. Yeah. Um, so that's the fun part is like, okay, I'm helping people connect to something that's going to actually give them life instead of turning to other things. Um, so, and that, that, the, the 3d printing video took me a year to make. Um, and it was like, legitimately, I spent so much time on YouTube at two in the morning trying to figure out why is my printer clogging? Why is my printer under extruding? Why do my prints keep coming off of the bed? And I went through so many bad videos until I found the answers so I made that video for Drew three years ago who didn't know anything. He was like, if I could make one video to answer all your questions or most 80% of your questions, I want to make that video. And I, I thought I may have missed the boat on it because now 3D, now Bamboo is sponsoring everybody, it seems like. 
and I paid for all my printers. Um, and so I thought, man, I don't, you know, tomorrow's doing multiple 3D printer videos. Holy crap. I think I missed the boat. But I think we're still actually really early on. And a lot of people don't know about this technology. So. Oh, yeah, um, man. It's the same with CNC's yeah. lasers and stuff. Like we, we see it daily because we're just, we're in the same group. But like right. yeah. a CO2 laser, I have people come over to the house and they're like, what do you mean you have a car sized CO2 laser? Like, yeah, doesn't everyone? <laughs> you know? Wait, so, you, you, you didn't get the email from Ohm Tech too? Yeah, like it seems that it feels like everyone has a 3D printer, but in reality, it's, it is still very much a niche. Yeah, yeah. It's, it is always fun though. Like somebody comes over that doesn't, hasn't seen like any of our garages and we open up the door for and we all, we're all nerds we all call it a shop it's a garage like these are garages you watch your mouth i know <laughs> right uh anytime i have like a corporate customer come to pick up like these ma like these big orders i'm like oh yeah just come on over to the shop and they're like this is am i at the right place this is a home this is a home isn't it uh, difficult though because you have to run the fog machine for an hour to pr produce the fog when you open up the door it's a lot right a it lot is <laughs> the nice thing is i found those ceiling mounts for the laser show oh yeah so yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah and then the sonos <laughs> makes it really easy for the sound but you know we open up we open up the garage door you guys are doing it wrong don't use a fog machine just use the the, the dust the, the, dust, the, just the sawdust. Just <laughs> <laughs> just run a, a cutting board through a drum sander and just just let the sand go just turn <laughs> off yeah just turn off the dust collector or have a have a uh a laguna yeah dust collector, <laughs> dust collector. <laughs> and, and the drum sander but yeah we open up the shop door and we're so used to seeing all of our shops that we're like oh yeah there that that's where your <clears> laser <throat> is versus where mine is it's over here and all that and people are like what where the hell do you park your cars it's like no 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 this is this is a this is a business like I've got tools. Then you turn on the CNC and I love showing off the CNC and the laser because it just blows people's minds that these yeah. things even exist. That's why those those videos Drew are, are always going to do well, or at least for the foreseeable future. They're going to do well because most people don't have any interest to have a 3D printer in their house. They don't realize they're going to have one in their house in the next 20 years. Anyways, it's just going to be like built into something. Hey, here's a fridge with a 3D printer. <laughs> <laughs> Samsung hub. Yeah, it can, um, well, it can it, dispense water or filter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's kind of cool because on one hand, mm -hmm. Pete, you're right. Like it's nobody has any real interest in in having these tools or some, you know, people don't have any interest in having going down the rabbit hole as far as we have. But on the other hand, your videos also make these tools like really, really accessible to just normal people. Like they take yeah. a lot of the fear of these tools <clears> out to where a lot, I think a lot of people that are just getting started, they are probably thinking like, oh sh shit, I can, I can do that. Look, even yeah. if Braden can, I can, right? Like, I remember Keith my, can do it. I can. my first experience with Drew was a buddy of mine got a track. We both had track saws and uh, he, I think he he ordered one of the little inserts. I think we both have the we both had the Craig one and he ordered an insert and I think two showed up because he clicked two instead of one or something like that. He's like, hey, I got this. And it said Whitworks. I'm like, oh, that's kind of neat. Some weird dude on Etsy puts his stupid name on these things. But <laughs> okay, cool, whatever. And I I looked it up. I'm like, this guy really is kind of a weirdo. Like this uh, I guess I'm gonna watch I guess I'm gonna watch his videos. I guess. I guess. <laughs> the 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 visual of a corporate customer showing up to your double wide <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love so one of my big customers is an underwriting company. So that like finance people and they're from the marketing department. They'll show up and Every single time, there's just like the revolving door of the entry level position person who gets stuck yeah. picking stuff up. Hmm. And every single time, I get the text like, "I think I'm here, but it's a house." I'm like, "Yep, give me a second." And open up the door. It's like, "Nope, that's <sighs> gotta, that's where you're." Got to queue up the CD player. Got to get the lights going. <laughs> <laughs> there's a yeah. There's your thirty boxes of stuff. Please get it out of here today. I don't have room for anything <laughs> else because this is a garage. That's awesome. Well. I mean, and Drew, so let's talk about the 3D printing. Obviously, that's become a big part of your business and what's funding a lot of the stuff in your shop, which we're going to get into momentarily. Um, you know, we're, we're very much in a similar space. Uh, you know, I was always like, I want to be a content creator, but I also like making, and I love 3D printing and finding solutions for people. Um, you, like, I look up to you, man. I genuinely do. Um, 
because you you do what I want to do later down the line, and I keep pushing, kicking the can down the road because life gets in the way. Um, but it's you know it's been amazing to watch you grow, watch grow the business, get more printers, uh, put out this amazing content where you're helping people out, genuinely helping people out, making very useful things. And you know, there's plenty of things that you make that you sell that I sell that some of the stuff that I sold before you even, and then Braden sells it now, Dan sells it now. It's all these people that seem to be selling a lot of the same stuff. Some people tend to sell the free stuff that you can find on Thingiverse or Maker World. Uh, but a lot of us tend to design our own version because we just think we can do it better and want to put our own spin on it. What's your take on that? Like, do you think there is still, like if someone sees, I, I'm very much like, if I see someone do something well, like I send people to you all the time. Like, go just go go get Drew's thing because he's already made it and it work, works good. I might design one, one down the line, but I'm not going to do one just to outsell you. So like, what's your take on the oversaturation of the market in the 3D printing space for all these accessories that we see? I think I like um, Simon Sinek a lot. You know, Simon Sinek is... Um, Seneca, yeah. Seneca, oh, yeah. Is it Seneca? He's, Seneca Woodworks, yeah. No, no, no. Sorry. The, the, Simon Sinek is, a, is an author. Oh, oh no. Uh, Never mind. Who, um, what does Simon say? Simon has had a viral TED talk talking about people don't buy your what, they buy your why. And he explains Ooh. he explains why people buy Apple. Um, it's really good. Just, just YouTube, Simon Sinek. I think it's S-I-N-E-K. <clears throat> it's already in the show notes. I got you. T uh, TED talk. Brilliant. I mean, best 18 minutes you'll ever invest. He has a book, uh, a concept um, recently called The Infinite <clears throat> Game. The Infinite Game. He says most people play finite games. Like football is a finite game. There's a winner and a loser. There's a scoreboard. There's, the, uh, there's a time. An infinite game is one where players enter and play and leave at their own choosing. And there are no winners and losers. There's just, you get to play the game. When who? Oh, and, I apologize. And so, <laughs> so I, I like the idea. I try to subscribe to that philosophy of it's better to play an infinite game where like in a finite game, it would be me and you are competitors and I must crush you because I must win, you must lose. But an infinite game is like, there actually is no scoreboard. There is no winning or losing. The winning is that we get to play. Oh, I love that. The winning is that we get to play. So I don't, I, ch I actually don't even, I'm not aware of my competition. I'm not aware of what people are pricing. I'm not aware of if people are ripping anyone off. I'm not aware of the saturation. I am literally, and that for better or for worse, I am focused on how do I make the best solution to a problem that I can possibly make right now. And that's the game for me. And whether that quote wins or not in the market, I don't really care about because I, I'm glad I get to not work at McDonald's and I get to play this game and I get to, I live on two acres and I'm my own boss. And if I'm feeling sick, I can take the day off and not to ask anybody. You know, if I want to take my wife on a date in the middle of the day, I don't have to ask anybody. You know, I get to play the game. I don't, I don't, that, that's the score for me is that I get to play the game. So I, I found like that just, it, that's a better way to live life. And then you can be friends with people who you, otherwise you'd be competitors with. And then you can learn from them and you can help them and you can bless them. And you can say, actually, I'm going to send them business because what's going to happen is like two years down the road, they're going to send me business. That's a way better game, in my opinion, than trying to kill people and crush people and all that stuff. That Agreed. said, that said, there is a lot of um, copycat regurgitation, um, and I think that is one that's kind of sad, but it's also it motivates me to just like, all right, well, I want, I want to make things nobody has yet, you know, um, which led to like my last product that me and a friend designed and now we're um we're get we're we're waiting to see how much it costs but we're going to get these things injection molded um mm -hmm. 
and we're going to get them clear injection molded. Um, so you can actually like see the sawdust coming out, which will be even better marketing and like good luck competing with that because that's like, that's a $10,000 thing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it's just, so to me, it's just like, okay, I'm going to use the success I have now to make tomorrow better instead of resting on my heels. And then in six months I wake up and I'm racing to the bottom with everybody else. Instead, I'm like, good luck trying to copy my thing because we just got, got an injection molded. <laughs> and um, I've got a guy who's who's like, hey, I whenever you're ready, I can introduce you to the people at Home Depot and we can get this in every Home Ooh. Depot and every Rockler and every Woodcraft. So I'm like, you guys can find out on Etsy. I'm trying to get my thing on homedepot.com so that when you're searching for a DeWalt router, my product shows up under it. And that's what I'm trying to get. So um, that's kind of what I'm trying to focus on and not like who's out there. You know, that's awesome, man. Whatever. I love it. I love that. I love that's that. It's a happier way to live, I think. Yeah. It's, you know, I, I often think of uh, people that live rent free in your brain that you compare to uh, and yeah, they don't yeah, even yeah. know who you are. For sure. You know, and I, and I, I, I like, I had that for a while. I would sometimes like, I would sit there and be like, Ah, oh, Drew's like Drew's like selling like crazy, and he's selling like a lot of the same stuff as me. And then like you got um, uh, Shop Nation, like he's killing it. He's you know, and they're both building shops, and I want to build a shop. And like comparison is the theft of joy. I heard that quote, and it's just stuck mm -hmm. in my brain. And like sure. you, you, you don't need to compare to someone else. And, and and I love thinking of like some. There's people that started their careers, famous people that we know that started in their 40s in their fifties, like yeah, older, like yeah. they found yeah. their thing. They found their why so late in life. And it's okay because the way I look at it is I'm looking for my why. I'm like, we're, we're, if you're here trying to like grow, grow business, whatever, like you're looking for your why. And I think that's important. You're at least working towards something. You're not just yeah. going coasting day by day. So keep, keep going and yeah. don't compare yourself because yeah, yeah. there's always someone doing better. And I think that's fine. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. In, you know, that so what was, was crazy about that is I remember Travis made a video about, I don't, it was years ago, and he was like, I just got my second 3D printer. I'm going full time and I've got big plans. And my first thought was like, oh crap, he's going to do something so much better than me. And I'm not going to be able to do any business. And then I become friends with them. And I realize, and then Travis is like for me. Yeah. He like wants me to succeed and is like giving me tips. And to our listeners, and which Travis? Travis, uh, Travis Lathrop, Shop Nation. There you go. Is there another Travis? Sorry. Uh, well, there's a couple. There's so a I'm sure there might be one, one or two more out there. <laughs> Travis no, Parker, the, the drummer. Le Travis Shop Nation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Shop Nation. And so tra he's so what's crazy is what could have been a comparison and like I don't like that guy. He's like one of my best friends and has been such a big brother mentor to me from a business standpoint. And literally, like my family is in a better spot because of the relationship I have with Travis because instead of getting like jealous and like, Oh crap and defensive that this guy is starting a 3d printing business and I want to start a 3d printing business and there can't be two of us instead of that. Actually, now I have a great 3d printing business because of Travis's mentorship. So it's this, yeah, you can go either way with that stuff and it's Love so much mindset. better to go the other way because maybe that person that you're jealous of or defensive of, is actually maybe they could coach you, you know? Maybe, maybe there's something they could give to you. Maybe they would love to give you some help, you know. Um, and you got to be in a place where you can accept that. But I mean, if you're in a place where you can say, "Hey, man, help me," um, you know, like a, a great example of that is, <clears throat> I would have I've never thought of doing ads, and Travis started doing ads, and he spent a lot of money learning how to do ads. And so like he spent 30 minutes on the phone with me. And so 
I'm on my second week of running ads and I'm getting almost six X return wow. on my ad spend. Incredible. Wow. Gee whiz. For every for every dollar I'm spending on stupid Instagram, I'm getting six dollars back. It's like holy Oh my gosh, you know? That's awesome. So and I would have never considered running ads like that. I'm still like I'm two weeks into this. So, you know, hold the don't <laughs> I'm not an expert. But I, I just think there's so much value in surrounding yourselves with people who have gone further than you and are willing to like reach back and share some lessons because it'll change your life. <clears throat> it can change your life. Right on, man. Love that mindset. Well, I mean, you talked about like, so growing your business, right? The last thing I really wanted to talk about is you, you know, you've grown to like, now you have staff and you're building like your ultimate shop, right? <laughs> like you're going pretty big right out of the gate. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the process for that? Cause I know a lot of our listeners, including myself, the dream is to build a shop one day, uh, Dan as well, Braden, no, not so much, but, uh, you know, we've always thought about building a shop. So what's that process been like? What was the plan? Why'd you go so big? Was, did you want to go bigger? I want all the details. Yeah, yeah. What's, what's the size, but in a unit of measurement of shop nation outfeed tables, like so how, how many, how many tables his... is it? <laughs> Yeah, how many Shop Nation pools, swimming pools, is your building? <laughs> I will say that my project is bigger than Travis's and cost half the price. I'll just say that. But do you wow. have a pool? I don't have a pool. Ah, I don't want to hear anymore. I'm kidding. Go uh, on, go. <laughs> not yet. Next year we'll have a pool. So, um, well, he's—I mean, Drew's Drew's been kind of finicky about water since the thing. So, <laughs> since the incident, yes. yes, that is true. You, since you're Drew's wet works. Yeah, you're not wrong there. Um, so part of moving out. So last year we moved from San, from the inner city of San Antonio to the, I like how Pete asked this question. He takes off his headphones and walks away. He's got to pee that bad. That's a, so, it's a power move that Pete does. <laughs> <laughs> Those listening can't tell Pete asked this question and then literally took his headphones and walked off. It's the Pete it's power a, play. It's yeah. Play. So we, uh, we, we moved from, urban San Antonio to we live. I never tell people exactly where we live because there's weirdos who have found where we live and want to invite themselves over. And it's crazy. It happened one time and I won't apologize for it. <laughs> uh, so uh, we live, we live uh, about 30, uh, I don't even say that, about 30 minutes outside of the DFW area in the country. Um, and so we, we have a couple acres and part of the um, idea of moving out here was being close to our family, but also to give us the space to build something that we want to build. Um, initially, uh, a year ago, I wanted to build like a small, like 30 by 40 metal building. Um, you can build those, you can get like a kit that's pretty inexpensive to do. So I started researching that and I talked to people who did that. When they said they really regretted not doing a 30 by 40. So I was like, okay. And then one of my neighbors built a 30 by 40 and has a woodworking business out of it. I went and spent an hour at his shop. And he said, yeah, I really wish I would have built like a 40 by 50. <laughs> and basically everyone that I'd met was regretting not building bigger. And then I met a guy. So I was thinking, ah, I think I'll do a 30 by 40. It was just 1,200 square feet. Now, we live in a very loose HOA. Um, we it's, it's like not terrible. It's not expensive, but they do have some architectural standards to keep property values high. One of them is you can't build a shop bigger than 2,000 square feet. So we, we, we can't build bigger than that. But I didn't want, want, some, I didn't want something that big. So... I, my, my plumber was doing some work for us and he built a 30 by 40 for about, I think it was $30,000 pre COVID. And he wanted to add 10 feet onto it to make it a 40 by 40. And it was going to cost $40,000 oh, to, to add 10 feet. <clears throat> wow. So he was like, Drew, build as big as you can the first time because it'll be the cheapest. So we kind of, um, Jimmy, so I was like, I'll still do a 30. And Jimmy DeResta, the godfather, I was telling him, and he said, Drew, 
you need to dream big and build as big as you can. He's like, you need to build a 6,000 square foot shop. And I was like, Jimmy, we can't do that. The biggest we can do is 2000. He said, well, that's what you need to build. So I kind of, I felt like, you know, Jimmy, he's got a few shops and I think it would be right to, I don't think I need a shop that's 2000 square feet, but, but Jimmy I bet, does. I bet you in three years, I might need one. Um, or maybe I just need to dream bigger and maybe I'm, I'm like not dreaming big enough. And so we decided <clears throat> we're just going to build to the max of our allotment and which may meant it was going to be more expensive. And so that's why we like waited, um, more than a year to do it. So the building, so it's a metal building. It is not a kit. So you can get kits that you basically like bolt together. Um, I'm going to like hat, I'm going to hang a lot of things. Like I'm going to hang some big fans. I'm going to hang my dust collector on the wall. And I really wasn't sure if like a kit was what I wanted to do. So, um, I found a guy who does it like they cut all the red iron on the slab, weld it all up. He's very finicky. Uh, he does like something. He takes it down and re redoes it. And I've watched him. I'm like, he doesn't like that cut. He unwelds it, pulls it down, cuts a new piece. He's like very meticulous. So we, we're, we're doing like a custom red iron building, which most we don't need. But um, we're treating this like it's our business. And it's 35 feet wide, 57 feet deep. So 1,995 square feet. The wall plate is 14 feet which is pretty standard in these buildings. And then the peak of the roof is 20 feet. That's pretty big. Um, we've got a 12 foot. I, I did a lot of research on like what size door do you put in a shop? You do a, do you do a 10 foot, eight foot door, 10 foot door. And basically like you want a 12 by 12 door because if you ever sell it down <clears> the <throat> line, you can put, you can sell it to someone who has an RV yeah. and they can put their mm -hmm. RV in there. So we're gonna have a 12 foot roll up door in there, a bunch of windows. It'll be foamed. We're going to paint everything black, and then I'm going to do plywood for the walls 12 feet up all the way around. So on camera, you won't – it'll just look like the ceilings are 12 feet, and then you won't see the other 8 feet because it'll just be black. It'll just disappear. And um, yeah, so we're super excited. It'll, it'll basically – the last 12 feet of the shop will have a wall all the way. So the shop will actually be 35 by 45. And then the last 10, 10 feet will be my be an office. Oh, that's um, nice. And so I'll have, um, I think I'm actually making an editing room um, to where it's like, if I need to go edit a video, I can go in there and it's like quiet and I can do voiceovers. And then I'll have a desk set up with like a nice live stream look that I don't have right now. And then probably room for an employee. And it'll have a bathroom, which is nice. It'll oh, have a that's where it's at. Bathroom. Bathroom or running here. water. You get I, a shower and I'll come live there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't have a shower, but I put in a urinal. So there's gonna be a sink, a Dan urinal, requires and a, a bidet. <laughs> a bidet. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited about the urinal. Out of everything, I'm excited about the urinal. I don't know why. I just... Well, that's because it's because anytime you walk into like a <clears throat> house or a shop or like anything like that where a urinal doesn't belong and there's a urinal, every, like I've a never non business. You're like, oh, it's a urinal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This place it's is classy. And they're like hundred and twenty dollars yeah. on Amazon. You can, like, yeah, you can just put them in anywhere. Nobody. No, no us. urinal. No urinal. I got a better idea, Drew. I want you to write this down. Bucket with a hose. No, have you ever been to one of those dive bars that has like a trough? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. it's just one for you, <laughs> like stainless steel. Yeah, yeah. yeah and and, it, it and your employee has to bring in a bag of ice once a day and just like drop it in there. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> Yeah, so it'll be it'll be like part woodworking. It'll be part woodworking shop studio. Um, it'll be part office, and then it'll be part three D print farm fulfillment station. So it'd be like three things in one. Right now, like we have four printers in our laundry room. We have 
six printers in our master bedroom closet. I've got a printer in my office. I've got one in the garage. And then we, I got my office here. We ship out of here. I've got stuff. So the problem with working from home is you're always at work. And my kids don't understand Mm -hmm. that like I'll be deep in something. My kids come in and it's like hard to be a good dad when you're like, Like I focus problems. Mm So -hmm. I am We trying, all do. re you know, you know how like Mm how -hmm. hard you have to work to work. <clears throat> uh I hate that. huh. Oh yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. This is like a support group. So like I'm We in that we get it's, it. it's like four 30 and I am like working hard to work. And then like a tornado of three boys comes in and they don't understand dad's at work. And I, they shouldn't because dad's home. So a big part of this is like, the quality of life we'll have getting the business out of the home to where I can have some physical, You physically so I have can, to walk to it. and I'm, I'm like really The separation. hoping like I can train my body to like, when I'm home, you can relax. I'm hoping I can like get that again. Do Wait, you also I'm sorry, feel to the what? whole, <laughs> yeah, do you ever have that feeling of like, how do I relax efficiently? I want Yeah, the most we're, relaxation per minute no, so that I can, no. which yeah, machines that's how can I am I all get, the time. yeah, which machines can I get doing something right now so I can relax and something can be happening? <laughs> I have the problem of how do I relax? I don't know how to relax. The only way I know how to relax is by like stressing making something. by doing But, something. but if I make something, then like a camera might be involved. So I have to like work really, really hard to make something without a camera. But then I might want to show it off on Instagram, but then I'm working again. So it's just like, that's Mm the problem with turning your hobby into a business. There's great stuff in it, but it's also means like, now I'm thinking of taking up painting or like, I need a hobby I cannot monetize. That's the problem. -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's video We'll find games a way for to me. monetize it. I, I, I was like, playing video games and for a little bit i was like well i got this set up i got the microphone got the lights like why don't i start streaming like no this is Yeah, for no, no, me no, 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 i can't no, do yeah. this <laughs> For you sure, guys make yeah. fun of me, but that's why I play GTA. Yeah. Well, Dan, Yeah. did you know we could I don't probably make fun make of you. you like dollars streaming Yeah. on on Twitch? Tens I'm listening. of cents. Except Dozens we can't of cents. play with Dan because he's in a bad person lobby. He That's is. right. Uh, Yeah. so Drew, okay, so you said that your HOA maxes out your buildings at 2,000 square feet. And you said that your shop is going to be 1,995 square feet. Yeah. Are you I going to kick yourself in five years when you want that extra squ five square feet and it costs you like 30 grand to do it? Like, why are you not doing it now? I <laughs> you know, yeah. I just I picked the round number of like thirty five feet wide. I don't want to be like thirty five point two feet wide, you know. So but That's yeah. funny because like I am in our, our area, it's actually mandated by the city and it's per square footage of your property. So we max out at 1300 square feet. So if I build a building that's like, you know, the posts are going to be eight feet on, on center, it's going to be a 40 by 32, which would be eight foot or like eight foot sections all the way across. And that gives me 1280. Mm So -hmm. it's like, oh, there's a 20 there you go square feet that I could I just maybe do a little bump out with a bathroom at the end or something. But, yeah just you put know, a trough 20 outside square foot I mean, urinal trough yeah, if they can maximize there you somehow go and give me that extra space, I'll take it. But, you know, yeah, you, you want to try to go as big as possible. I was like thinking, oh, you know, you can get these prefabs that are like, you know, 20 by 30, but you're right. Like, go ma max it you out. drew you Yeah. said something though that i think would either a make a great t-shirt or be you know maybe just like something to live by like run your business like be the woodworker that jimmy duresta thinks you deserve to be Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really, it was really, I was so glad he said it to me because he could have just not said, he could have said cool. neat He could have said neat or yeah, but he's like, you need to dream bigger. don't be a coward he said Who are you? yeah, yeah. <laughs> How did you get my number? And I honestly, like, to be honest, and I know this is like internet and YouTube, not the place for honesty. I, I have, I'm struggling with like, this is too nice for me. Like, I don't deserve this big or nice of a shop. Like, I have those thoughts.
Are you saying you have imposter syndrome at oh, your great. level? Yeah, trouble trouble focusing and imposter syndrome. Cool. <laughs> so you're like all of us. Me. You're One so of relatable. Us. One of us. Take a number. Yeah. Like I feel like I feel I don't know if guilt's the right word, but I feel like this shouldn't <clears throat> this shouldn't be this nice. It shouldn't like I don't deserve this. And um I've like and part of it is like, well, if I can make three YouTube videos about this, um, I can you know, maybe I can get some sponsors. Maybe I can get some stuff to help offset the cost. Um, but I am like, man, I'm not looking forward to the comments <laughs> of of like must be nice or whatever. Because it, oh, yeah. it, it's it, those are coming. It I'll be the first of, one. It costs a lot of money to do to well, to do this. Can you share a ballpark cost or what you're projecting or what you're whatever yeah. you're comfortable sharing? Where what at, is it? I, what is it in track saw? <laughs> dust cover inserts <laughs> it's um it's a hundred and fifty thousand dollars must be nice Yew! must be nice <laughs> um 20 of that is dirt we had to bring in because our land sloped and it sloped oh, more man. than i thought it did <clears throat> so we started we thought we'd need about two thousand dollars worth of dirt and as the trucks were coming they're like we're gonna need more and it was like he had already started, so it was like, well, how much more do you think? Like, it might be six or eight thousand dollars. I'm like, oh gosh, but we need it to pour a foundation. You know, it's like dirt. It's way cheaper to bring in more dirt than to pour. So it's not concrete. dirt cheap. It's not Drew, dirt cheap. Drew, you live in Texas. You're surrounded by dirt in every direction <laughs> so, for like, so like a billion a miles. miles. Yeah, just every don't get some. Every time a semi would show up, it was like two hundred bucks, and. They did that for, I think, four or five days of just constant trucks showing up. And then it just, the pile kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then it got to where like, okay, we can do the shop, but you're going to have a, literally a steep thing like this. How are you going to, if you don't put grass on it, the soil will erode. If you put grass on it, you're going to have to mow it. And it was Oof. like, then I started thinking of like my, cause my, we have a riding lawnmower and my kids like to ride it. And then I thought of, there might be a day where the kids are mowing the grass and they're 14 and they flip the mower and they die. And at that moment, I would pay anything to have more dirt so that there'd be less of a slope. So we put a very, very generous apron all the way around it so that you, so anybody could safely mow it. So that's where a lot of the cost of the dirt came in. And it was just the like, peace of mind. It's worth every penny. Yeah. 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 It was like, okay, this is, this now made the shop $12,000 more expensive, but I will never worry about myself or my kids mowing the grass here. <laughs> Plus you'll and, always have, you'll have throwback options for content. Oh yeah. And add, that makes the video better because there's some drama. But mm -hmm. here, so here's the crazy thing. I can build this shop and it's $150,000. Or I can go in my area and rent commercially. And the for the same square footage in my area is $5,000 a month plus utilities for three-year minimum contract. Oh, yeah. So it, I'm going to- It's worth give, it long term, man. I'm going to give someone else- like whatever that is, like two or three hundred thousand dollars, and I have to drive, <laughs> and I have to have like double all this stuff. So this, yeah, it's a lot of money, but it's also going to appreciate tax free until we sell our house. I can write it all off. So yeah, it's so then it then it became about eight months ago. I was like, we can't afford this. So then the question was like. What, what would I need to do? Dirt? No, the question was, what do I need to do to be able to afford <clears throat> this? And then it was like, okay, I'm going to have to invent a new product and then we're going to have to market it really well. And, and to do that, I'm going to have to do this and I'm going to do this. And so I just reverse engineered, like I need this amount of much money. How am I going to make it? And then I just started working towards it. So, um, what was the product yeah. they used for that, that bump? Our, our, trim, our, our trim, trim router, router attachment. Yeah, yeah. Nice. That was a good one. Yeah. <clears throat> I I thought we would... I think we've sold 700 so far. I thought we would wow. do like 50. 
So um, there's your dirt right there. Yeah. So no, if people want to, if people want to follow along with the build uh, and stuff, because you're not doing a step by step video, right? So where can they follow along for all the shop content? On Instagram, I'm doing you know stories, and I have a highlight of the mall. Um, probably in January, I'll have episode one of the shop build. I'm going to do a, probably a three part series. Right now, all I'm doing is writing checks, but <laughs> I've been recording video since April of the process of designing it. I made a scale model. Um, I, like I laser cut like MDF to make the building. Then I 3d printed everything at 124 scale. So I made, so there'll be a video of like, here's the model that I made. Here's the flat dirt. Here's us bringing in the dirt. Here's us leveling it out. Here's the slab going in. Here's all the concrete work. Here's the metal going up. And then it'll end with the metal building being skinned and done. So I think that'd be pretty satisfying going from dirt to like metal building in one video. And then after that, it's like electrical insulation to finish out. And then I, I don't know if I'll end it there and make setting up the shop a separate video or if I'll do setting up the shop in that video and it'll just be like a two-part series. I don't know. I'll probably lead to a lot of videos because you're, you're always going to be like, here's how I outfitted this wall of the shop with Blink. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always yeah. a good good resource. I am. I actually am. I'm going to make um, in our last house that we built, I made all the sinks. I made all the concrete counters and integrated sinks for like $3.50 a sink. Oh, that's cheap. Like a bag of concrete. So I am thinking about making a video about building a concrete, making a concrete sink counter and then like a walnut base. And then I'll throw in there like, oh, we built this bathroom. Here's the wall. Here's the urinal. Here's the toilet. Here's the tie work we did. Here's the door we made, blah, blah, blah. And I'll be in one video. That'll be cool. So, so, so next year on YouTube, that stuff will come out. So, okay. So... I just, I know you've probably done this math and it's super basic math, but I'm always really interested in providing a little bit of context. So $150,000 building. And you said that minimum for spaces that were going to be similar sized <laughs> was a three year lease at like $5,000 a month. Yeah. That's the goal rate where we're at. $5,000 a month. You hit 150 grand in two and a half years, which yeah. means you would have, you're basically getting six and this doesn't include any of the write-offs. This doesn't include yep. any discounts, any sponsors, anything like that. <clears throat> you're basically getting six months free rent by building your own building and building that value into That's right. your property, into your That's business. Right. So uh, these big purchases and like these big investments into your own business can be really, really scary. But a lot of times the math works out. It's a write-off. It's a write-off. It's a write-off write -off people. You just get the write-off people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're right. And I, I talked to an attorney, a CPA, and a bookkeeper about this. And I was like, hey, help me make this sense. Help me organize things and organize my business and form our LLC in a way where um, all of this is protected and we're taking advantage of all the tax strategies that are legal and out there. And so I learned a lot. But it, it was like, and that's one of the reasons why I was like, let's just go big. Like, let's just do it right from the start. If it takes us six months longer and if it costs us more money, I would rather wait a little bit and do it right. Because in five years, it's just all like higher return on investment. And, you know, like, at, yeah, after the two and a half year mark. So like, do it, you know, do it right on the, on the front end. Um, so I don't. And the bookkeeper yeah. was like, you can keep a ton of books in there. Like so <laughs> many books. Keep books. so many books. I, I've learned so much about that stuff. So, and it's, and so what's crazy is it's actually become, this sounds weird. Whenever I hit 100,000, so for years, my goal was 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. And in April, I think in April, I hit it. And the strain and the strangest thing happened is I felt nothing. When the plat came in, like my kids were happy, my wife was happy, and I was like, "The piece of silver." Wait, the like, the one from YouTube or the one from Malcolm? 
<laughs> the one from YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I have one from Braden too. And so, so the the funny thing is, is the one Braden did and um, and Malcolm and others, those were those were more meaningful than the hundred thousand <clears throat> one from YouTube. And it took me a while to figure out, like, why, why, like, why was that? Because I was expecting maybe to cry or feel all this joy or to feel happy. And I felt absolutely nothing. And then for about three weeks, I lost all motivation to make a YouTube video. And the problem was my goal was dead. You lost your why? Yeah, like I I had no, like I achieved my goal and then, then what? Now what? Yeah, and so I, I realized actually what makes me happy is stretching for a goal, not getting the goal. That's actually what makes me <clears> happy. <throat> yeah. Like getting the goal doesn't matter. It's the pursuit of the goal that actually makes me happy and that's where we grow. So the shop has become the new goal. Like, okay, I need to make X amount of money to be able to afford the shop. And then, so what's going to happen in like March or April when it's all like moved in and ready, I'm going to need a new goal. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what that's going to be. But, I'll figure it out. But that, so that's been, it's been really good of like, I've learned, um, I need motivation to keep me on the track. Like I, I can't just like make YouTube videos. Um, I can't just 3D print stuff. Like I need something that's bigger than me that I can't do immediately or on my own that I need to learn some things to figure out. And for a while, that was YouTube. For a while, that was Etsy. For a while, that was 3D printing. And then I figured out and I've got, I've like conquered the game. I beat the boss. I need a new, I need a new boss to beat. I need a new Grand Theft Auto thing. So <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what that'll be, but <clears throat> it's been interesting that like the shop in the silver play button taught me that lesson about myself. And I'm like 41, and I didn't know that. Hmm. Just start a go. new YouTube channel and call it Shop Country. <laughs> 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 well, that that's all right. So that's really good info. I think we should try to move on to the next thing. Um, I mean, I feel like we could just keep talking for forever, but we do have some good questions and. We also do have one little piece of maker news, I guess, or you know, woodworking news that we want to bring up. So we're going to start that. Good news, everyone. We're going to talk about the Craig Mortis mate, the parent uh, domino killer <laughs> that we have. And domino the only reason killer. we're bringing it up is because Drew actually has one in his hand. <laughs> or on a you floor. Guys haven't, you guys haven't seen it. I got one right I've here. We've seen, seen it look since at the video. That. I'm not... I mean, but you haven't seen it like right here. You haven't seen it live. I haven't we seen haven't it. seen it on a computer screen. Yeah. I mean, like we have in all the videos, but we're go. seeing it in a different computer screen right now. Yeah, Dude, I've only uh, some, saw some guy named no, Spence Lee. I don't know. Ooh, oh, look at this shaking wave. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So Does, are you uh, are you in any way, shape, or form able to like give your thoughts on this thing? Yeah. I don't know why not. Well, I don't know. I don't know if you're like a, a sponsor or if they sponsor you. Craig might come in either add more or take away some of your dirt. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they, no. might. they might. <clears throat> they might. Um, I got an email maybe a month ago and it said, hey, we have a new product. Would you want to try it? I was like, yeah. And so that, it showed up. But there was no obligations outside of that. <clears throat> so... um. But what are your thoughts? I just we, want to hear. We wrapped it a little bit uh, last week or the week before, so I'd actually yeah, yeah. love to hear what you think about it. So I I've done some test cuts. I'll show you. I'll show you. Which I mean, the dominoes look like dominoes. <clears throat> I mean that they give you um, loose and, tenons. Loose tenons. Yeah. Sorry, loose tenons. But I mean, you can do a nice. You can do a nice it's, joint. It's tenoning. <clears throat> yeah, I should hammer that in. But my well, that's a tight tenon and not a loose tenon. It's not, yeah. Point. At first, it was loose. <laughs> I'll start with what I don't like about it. Um, I don't in the Jessam is the same, 
they use the same one. Spoiler alert, Justin makes this for Craig. I don't love this. The dust port? Um, it's really small. <clears throat> it doesn't fit like the Festal hose or a common extractor I, hose. I know a guy that can redesign that. I am. So <laughs> we are, uh, you know, in the spirit of the infinite game, I am currently working on making a complete replacement so not just the coupler, but like where you would take this off and put what we put on, and then it would fit lots of hoses. The I think that port. would be a, the whip port. I think it'd be a good seller. Yeah. Um, so the build quality is, aside from that plastic port and this knob, everything is metal. And plywood, right? The face? And this plywood is like, ball, like 12 layer Baltic birch. Mm which they give you, uh, which yeah. is really good. Um, I've gotten some things from woodpeckers and TSO that have plywood. And it's like the same type of like, yes, yeah, good quality plywood. Uh, it's got good laser etch. It's got good etching on here. I feel like if you were going to get a beadlock or a dowel max or a what does Jessam call their beyond <clears throat> one? The um, mortis, oh. uh, mortis, mortis pal. Max. What did I? Pocket Mail Pro. Yeah, that's okay. the one. Something Pocket like Mail that. Pro. Um, I haven't used the Pocket Mail Pro, but it looks like it's its big brother. Yep. And it's since been confirmed that Jessam is making and that one for is Craig. All metal. Is it and all the, metal? I think that's. I believe it's all metal as well. You know, I was looking at the picture of the Jessam and there's a lot of like even some of the hardware they use, <clears> like the, the dust port is the exact same. Um, there's like some metal tabs that they use. So it's clearly made by the same people. No surprise. Um, well, I, I mean, I, I, people people have to check it out and kind of form their own opinions. But yeah, yeah. The consensus. I feel like it, it should be cheaper. I feel like. Yeah, Spagnola like released a, a good video on it where he compares it to everything. And he kind of gives you some other options. So definitely check that out. But listen, we're all for like new unique tools, right? We love that. We love in, like engineering and ingenuity and we want to see new stuff come out. So this one's, you know, you, we're kind of I, like I saw it already because I was like, oh, that's the that's like the Jessam one, right? And then we all yeah. found out that it's the yeah. Jessam one it <laughs> redesigned. It's so a, it's like, so I don't the. I'm trying to think of if I were a beginner woodworker on a budget, like that's still three something is still a lot. For me, that's a no. That's a no for I, me, dog. Mm -mm. That, Not when that, you can get a good dowling jig for. Yeah, for sure. But the idea of like using your drill to make, I don't know. It's still a little mm. weird for me. Um, and yet we'll all drill and then wobble <clears> it out. Like, gotta make this hole a little wider we're all doing it <laughs> yeah yeah this is well, just i think it'll be a big seller for them i think i think they're gonna sell a lot of them but i i don't know i think if it was like hey this is 149 i'd be like whoa that's actually i, I would favorite. definitely consider it for that at but the three is it 350 i forget the price the, I feel it's like right it's now it's on sale for 300 yeah. it's 299 on their site okay yeah so it's you know yeah I don't know what it costs to make, but I felt like ninety nine dollars on sale on Black Friday or like one forty nine every other day. I feel like that'd be fair. I, yeah. I, I think it's overpriced at three fifty, but but if you're doing a lot of a lot of tenants, you need a domino for the one offs. Right. I think this is the one. So good stuff. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to pick your brain on that one before we got into uh, questions. Now we are uh, we're getting tighter on time. We got about. 30 to 40 minutes max. So uh, we're going to kind of rapid fire these, but I forget which, is it this one? Oh, Black Betty, Ram, Lamb. That's the question? That's the one. That's the one, okay. I'm like, man, which which one do we use? Oh Makes no gosh. sense. Because I have nothing to do with questions. Well, we have to kick it off with, of course, our voice of AWP and your spirit animal, Malcolm. Hey guys, it's Malcolm from Boston Over Woodworks. And I see that you have run out of guests and you have started <laughs> to recycle them. Anyway, in honor of Cutting Board Awareness Month, my question this week is, what's your favorite cutting board? Okay, thanks. <laughs> uh, Thank my favorite cutting board is the, like, 
the small like 12 inch by eight inch i probably grab it 99 percent of the time of all the boards that are in my house boom that is that I'm what he's like, asking what board do you have in your house no your what's your favorite, favorite cutting board that's which bear is best dan which my bear, bear is, is best? best that size cutting board dan i want to hear drew last uh my favorite cutting board is the one i just finished is it one that's going to explode no, it won't explode. None of my none of my boards explode. I don't know what you're talking about. There's no Allegedly. survivors to report it. <laughs> That's how you take care of that problem. Uh, actually, no. My favorite cutting board is actually probably the one that Sarah from Rosie's Woodshop bought from me. The one with the zebra zebra the, wood border. The taking time bomb. Yeah, yeah. yeah the ex the exploding mine. But I haven't had any reports of it exploding yet. Although we haven't heard from Sarah in a while, so I don't know. In the eyes of <laughs> an angel. Oh <laughs> That's so good. What about what about you, B man? Since we're gonna have Drew go last. Uh, uh, OSB and grain. Yes, oh, that's, Ooh, that's, classic. It. that's it. Something just a real classic. Something that gives you a little extra spice <laughs> in your food. I know you white people like it plain, but I want a little zest. <laughs> oh my god! In the sense of formaldehyde and oh. wood shavings. <laughs> God. Drew, Tasty. Drew, some the no lie, the plastic IKEA one that we got for like two bucks, whatever. Gotta love those plastic You're the shavings worst. in your food. I, Just the I worst. have, I have a really nice walnut Ooh, one I made micro years plastics. ago, <clears throat> and I, I can't bring myself to use it because it's so nice. Honestly, if I'm processing like raw meat or whatever, I'm pulling out the giant plastic one that Dan was laughing at me about. Like you I don't want to clean my wooden cutting boards of like chicken residue. Here's, here's the thing too. Dan and I deal with this at like at craft fairs all the time of like, oh, I want to get it, but I would never use it because it's too nice. We sell it by telling them, look, you have to use it. Please, please use it. We'll refinish any cutting board for free at any time. Yeah. I've never had to refinish you a cutting can board. Refinish and then you give him Drew's you business cutting. card. <laughs> I've never had one come back and be refinished. So of course. easy way yeah. to push the sale over the edge. All right. Next questions so from Alex Adams. Hey, he's got two. So let's get in here. Let's start with the one from last week. Hey guys, Alex at type a furniture and I've been doing more panel glue ups recently. So I wanted to ask, what is your preferred method of applying glue for those glue ups? There's obviously lots of different jigs, rollers, brushes, other types of glue bottle attachments. Uh, so what have you guys tried and what do you like? Well, I think we're all going to say finger, right? That's the way yeah. to spray glue. Drew, do you agree? I use the Rockler um, Sell out. Sil silicone brush thingy that's like five bucks. Oh, I do use that too. Yeah, yeah I use that. Or my finger, but that's the that's the those I try the to Lord's that. spreader, as they call it. <laughs> the we Lord's did have spreader. some uh, some uh, out of the left field ideas. Like I use the Mayo dispenser. That's like a wide mouth, so it's a thin, wide strip. It's about an eighth of an inch tall, inch wide. I gotta you give get it nice, to you. That's a great bead. idea, and I can't believe I've never done it. I got the idea from you because I thought For you like one time used like some one of the sauces that you use from. No, no, I was using a. A Freddy's sauce or something yeah, like yeah. that bottle. I think it had a wide with mouth. The mayo, on it, with it? The, no, it didn't. The mayo oh, wide then, mouth. That's well, a good idea. I'm giving you credit, anyways. And then the other one All was right. like when you go to like a fancy restaurant or like street food. That sometimes they have like a sauce dispenser, and it's got a tip with like three or five openings, so you get like a nice like spread. Uh, like one of those, I think. And and I've been looking for it in the woodworking industry. And as I was telling you guys in a pre-show, I'm like, wait, that's a food thing. So. You have you have to be very deliberate with what you search on Google to find that thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very specific and very deliberate. Braden ended up on Wicked.com. Do not go. <laughs> do it was not. Bad. All right. Speaking of Wicked, not. here's uh, the other Alex Adams question. Oh gosh. Hey guys, Alex at Taipei Furniture, and my question is: Do you think it's worth it to spend the time to polish the bed of my jointer? And if so, what would you use to accomplish this? To add some context, I have a 12 inch bench top jointer. Technically it's a jointer planer combo from Grizzly and the bed length is about four foot long. 
the bed is actually made from aluminum and it's also corrugated. So like every half inch, it goes from the bed height and it dips down uh, by about a quarter inch and then it pops back up and it does that the full width of the jointer. And the raised portions that are in contact with the wood, you can still see the milling marks. And when you run your finger over it, you kind of get that zzz sound, not quite like a record scratch, but similar. And I have tried putting like carbon method on it before, and it doesn't seem to really do too much. And so I'm curious um, if what I'm doing now, which is putting wax on it, if that's actually wearing down quicker than it actually should be because of the milling marks that are on there. So to anyone that's confused, uh, some of the older style, especially joiners, uh, they would have like rib, they're almost like speed slots, like speed holes that are gro like grooved into the aluminum. I don't know why to catch the sawdust maybe, but um, Alex, like as far lug, as... It's like lugs for off-road tires. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's essentially, it's a flat bed with like gro like eighth inch or quarter inch grooves cut into it every inch or so. Um, and... Honestly, Alex, like if you're using paste wax, that's forming a nice hard coating on there. Apply the wax, give it a little bit, let it cure, buff it on there. If you're feeling like the, 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 the actual aluminum's not smooth, maybe sand it down a little bit with some like 400 or something a little higher. But wax should help absolutely with that. So I would recommend just some paste wax and carbon methods is fine. But it should last just as long on, on aluminum. What do you guys think? Yeah. I would use uh, what I always use in my shop, which is uh, a, like a silicone dry lube spray. Oh. That would be the easiest thing to use on that ridged, ruffled, whatever that is. Uh, and that doesn't bed. like that doesn't get Transfer on the wood? material. No, hmm. no. Just on the first board. <laughs> no, I, I use it on all my machines. I love it. Uh, the thing, it doesn't last a whole lot, lot longer than uh, like a paste wax or whatever. But uh, applying it is so dang easy. It's so easy. And it dries almost immediately. So well, That's good to know. I've never tried that. that. I do have that spray as well. So What's it? Like where do you is it like at Home Depot? Yeah, it's Home Depot. It's uh, I use the PB Blaster dry lube. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. Peanut butter blaster. Yeah. yeah. Peanut butter blaster. Okay, it's good to know. I'll try. It that. sounds like he needs to sand it down. Like if it's rough, yeah. It'd be amazed what what like sandpaper would do. It. Well, I I've, I've sanded my table saw and my joiner before because yeah. I've had yeah, to yeah. be in aluminum there. though. I would be worried about sanding yeah. it uneven. That's why you got to go real mean? high on the grit. With the okay. biggest, I think he's got a six inch You're sander. Right, it would be softer, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just to like yeah. take if there's any burrs on that, to try to take that out. Yeah, burr. Because he asked burr. about polish. He asked about polishing it, right? So does that infer like he wants to take some abrasives to it? I don't. Know. But I would, yeah. I mean, if get that high shine on there. If you go higher up on that, and then just buff it up and put, get the ro get the Rotex with eighty grit. <laughs> we really don't want the grooves that. in there. <laughs> yeah. no, I think that might be grooves. a bad idea. <laughs> don't do that. I will don't say if that. if the if your material is not sliding over it, do something. Put wax on it. Put dry lube because if your material is like sticking on the joiner, I just oh, did yeah. this. Yeah, it can be really really hard to get it through, and the more you're having to like yeah. push on the material on a tool like that the more unsafe it is like it's getting dangerous. it to where your, your material is gliding will make it so much safer to work with. Oh yeah. I, I'll, I'll take that dry lube and I'll even spray the bottom of my uh, trim round. Shoes. Spray it on oh. shoes. <laughs> or shoes. Shoes is a great Gotta start idea. a fire. Dry lube. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Making uh, a sandwich. Dry lube. Dry lube. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, all right. Next questions from Gregory D'Ambrosio, the patron. Hey guys, I am planning to make an outdoor bench made from sapile for my uncovered patio. I live in the Pacific Northwest, so it will ensure quite a bit of weather throughout the year. As part of the design, I plan to build it where the seat can swing up and you can place cushions, other items on the inside. I had two questions for you. One, I see that Rubio came out with a DuraGrit product. Have you used it, and would you recommend I use that as the finish? Two, 
I'd like to put some kind of liner on the inside of the bench to better protect whatever is inside the bench from any weather. Is there a type of waterproof material you think that would work best? Thanks for all that you do, Greggy. That's actually that's a really cool, good question. Has anyone ever used the Rubio DuraGrit stuff? I This is the first I'm hearing of it. I feel like I've anything outdoors, it. I just want to slap some kind of like varnish or epoxy on it. Oh. Uh, yeah, I've never. Drew, have you done a lot of outdoor projects? Zero experience. Yeah. Uh, but I would say, yeah, definitely get some kind of varnish, some kind of outdoor stuff. Total Boat's great. We use, we all use it, you know. Uh, get some gleam on there. Definitely yeah. soak the end grain that's going to be touching the ground. Like, even, like, flip it upside down, put tape around it, soak it up. Uh, let it soak up, like, the penetrating epoxy, because then you're not going to get moisture in there. Now, what about waterproof liners for inside? So he's basically going to make a crate or a box and a seat's like a bench type thing. So when the seat flips up, Inside there is uh, an area to store cushions. In the pre-show, I mentioned the Flexi Seal, and I wasn't joking because they <clears> sell <throat> it in a in a can where you can spray it. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think that would be a great I idea. Use, them, use it on my shed roof. No yeah. leaks. For sure. I would I'm, consider just doing the top though, because if you cover the inside, if you get any sort of leak that will come in, you're you're basically holding all of that material all that water and all that moisture good if point you just yeah. do the top it'll keep it from getting through but it'll give it somewhere for like any moisture that does get in to drain it's a good idea yeah that's i think, a great I think idea. what you have to realize is uh like you said you're in the pacific northwest and mother nature is going to win in the long run no matter what so whatever you choose you're going to have to refinish it you know once a year or once every couple years if you want to keep it maintained i mean that's just the the fact of the matter we talked about this a lot also like three or four episodes ago with uh a question that alex adams had uh he was talking right. about an outdoor table so we went into yeah. a lot of <clears throat> of uh finishes and and just different ways to right. kind of combat 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 implies that you can win um delay the inevitable with with weather she's a yeah. real fickle bee and if you're looking for some cheap <laughs> waterproof material um go to home depot lowe's any of those you can get like it's like eighth inch uh vinyl like it's it's a vinyl material it's meant for like fencing or you literally some people glue it on like in bathrooms up against the wall it's very flexible and you can cut it down to size. You're going to have to do some caulking around the sides and you can make a watertight box in there. Not airtight, but you know, like at least if you could line it with that and then uh, prevent it, you know, from moisture getting in there. But you're, you're really fighting an uphill battle. I feel like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. where a great like moisture free box is inside our the patrons. Oh, okay. Our patrons. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good question, though. Very good question. Hopefully the project works out. And uh, la well, actually, not last but not least, we got a question from Mitch from Horndog Maps. I don't think we played this one last week. Hey, this is Mitch from Horndog Ooh, Maps, audio. and I had a question about different furniture styles. So I know there's like mid-century modern, shaker, colonial. Wait, we did answer this question last week. Yeah. yeah. I apologize. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. All right, in that case, I'll play this question from Tony. He's a new uh, first-time caller, long-time listener. Never said that before. Hi, guys. My name is Tony from Tiny Texan Woodworks. Been listening to the podcast from the beginning and really enjoy it. Not a lot applies to me. I don't have a CNC and don't do Instagram, so I've never reached out. But I do get joy and some knowledge out of the pod. Some. This question is mostly for Braden, I think. <laughs> I make a lot of cutting boards and got tired of people asking for personalization of them, so I bought a laser pecker too. I've gotten to where I can put my info on the back of the board by not much more than that. I'm not the most technological person out there. My wife wants me to laser some Yeti cups for presents. Is there somewhere I can go for settings and help? Thanks, guys, for all you do. Braden? Laser? Totally for you. Well, I, I don't know why, but I am thrilled that I am now the laser guy and not Pete. 
It just makes me, I can't wait to be the 3D printer guy. <laughs> um, you know, just Pete Midwest. Just st stay humble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two questions. Oh, sorry. Playing out accident. Hush. Midwest Pete is talking. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah I got you. The, the, the laser pecker is really nice. It has a lot of presets in, uh, in the app. That's all I, that's all I use is just the presets. And then Dan and I hope, hope to God that nobody who's in charge is paying attention as we run those presets and we smoke out the craft fair. Right. Which we did a couple mm. of times this last week. <laughs> there was one where we were like, you should probably take that one outside. The, fir the <laughs> first one we did, we were like, oh, this is so much worse than normal. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I guess we're only halfway through. Let's ride it out. <laughs> Do you guys enjoy? I, I've done the Tumblr engraving like three times. And man, I just get nervous <clears throat> that I'm going to waste a $20 Yeti every day. I have never engraved a Tumblr. I've never once done a bunch. I never have like felt the need to like want to do like a whole but like yeah, let me do five hundred for this company or whatever. Like I just no, uh, no. or but or one offs. Laser yeah. Pecker sent me an <clears throat> LP two, and along with it, they sent me this. If you're not watching the video, you can watch it on mm -hmm. uh, youtubecom slash another Woodshop podcast. But <laughs> they have an attachment that you can add to it, so you can laser round objects like cups mm. so look into that <clears throat> that attachment uh, it allows also you to rotorize your material yeah it'll it it works as a rotary but it also works as like a uh a track so the laser can can uh laser longer things in the in the it's like a printer like a oh, laser wow. track saw yeah a laser track saw oh there we go that's a good idea drew, drew get on that drew get on that <laughs> I'm good. Just work um, backwards. Work backwards. Yeah, but Three customizing, if you can do it, get a cheap little, whatever, there's woodpeckers, there's uh, laser pack. it's not woodpeckers, laser pecker, Woodpe there's... Did uh, you say cheap and woodpeckers? In this no, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I said it. I said it. Uh, but, you know, there's laser pecker, there's uh, X-Tool is another one. There's tons of all these, like, smaller lasers nowadays that you can get that you can literally just run off an app on a phone. And uh, they're all pretty dang good, especially for basic personalization. If you're looking, you what, do, it's worth it. I think that laser pecker too. The the detail I can get, it's fantastic. It's yeah. a little work. machine that it is. Yeah, definitely worth checking out. Um, all right, last questions from um, is it Roy 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 A Roy, Roy A? I always say Roy, but if, I, if we're saying it wrong, we're sorry. But here's the question. Um, Two questions for you guys. What is the best way to learn 3D modeling? And which software is the best option to start learning on? Well, Roy A. Oh, Roy A. That's how Roy I said it. Well, I think Roy Pete A should with answer cheese. this or well, Drew. Well, I'll answer uh, quickly. So my, my go-to is Fusion 360. It was a steep learning curve, but once I got over it, it's like that's the only way I can view 3D modeling now. It's it's kind of my benchmark for it. I tried SketchUp. It was fine, and I just felt that it was very limiting. There is a free version that you can get of Fusion 360 if you're an entrepreneur. There's a three-year license you can get. You just have to keep like reapplying for it. Uh, so do a little research on that. And they have actually phenomenal uh, self-paced training. You can just go through, and there's awesome videos, walks you through everything in a program, and you can learn a lot. In a single weekend, you can go from zero to being able to make 3D printable items uh, or 2D sketches or whatever you need to do. So if you put in the work and do a little research, you can absolutely knock it out. You don't have to go to YouTube and learn a bunch of stuff and follow courses. So it's scary, but if you put in the work in a weekend, you're going to come out a lot better on the other side. Trust me. Drew, any input? Yeah, the same. I, I tried learning SketchUp and I, my mind just doesn't think like that, I guess. Um, Fusion is the standard, I think. Um, I dabbled with Tinkercad. It's like very, very big. If you know nothing, maybe that's like a good entry point. But Fusion is where you want to go. Um, I think that there's a lot of bad YouTube videos about that stuff. But he had gone through that course, and <clears throat> that that's just gonna set you up if you want to like really model. That's the one you do. Yeah. What do you get? What about you guys? Do you have any? Input? Uh, I had to have you uh, model me a 
push stick yesterday, so I I got nothing to add you, to this. <laughs> you sent me a file that like wanted to break my computer. I don't even know how you did it, but I'm I was I'll impressed. I'll tell you what. Though. Fun fact: that push stick is the first thing that you helped me draw. Oh really? On Aspire, yeah. It just made like like every curve you had in there was like a thousand little walls. No, so no, if no, I wanted no. to do a that. round over, yeah, you it's... Drew that. I still use it to this day. <laughs> I I took some liberties recreating it for you. Uh, Braden, do you use anything? I have let Pete and Patrick Enzel uh, awkwardly walk me through Fusion, and once I started to understand like some of the buttons and what they meant when I pushed them, uh, it was tolerable. But I got my one product model that I wanted, and I have not opened it since. And I just hope that Pete's available. So, um, when I'm you need something, up... just email Pete. He'll do it for you <laughs> for free. Here, I'm going to oh, bring up this... some software that nobody here has brought up yet. But uh, Shaper 3D looks pretty oh. user friendly. I'd <laughs> I'd I'd like to start using that someday. That's not fact, related that to Shaper plan. Origin, by the way. That's a no, no, that's no, a different that's different. Software. It's different. It is actually Shaper 3D. There's some good videos out there. Remarkably Alex, good. On, on the Alex iPad from uh, Bevelish Creations has some mm -hmm. pretty good videos on how to use it. Uh, one of these days, I'm going to get into it. If you're an iPad person, especially an iPad Pro with a pencil, you're that's your thing. You're going to love it. Yeah, it's actually really nice. That's it's what got, drew, drew me to it. It's almost got like slightly Blender vibes in a way too. Uh, uh, Blender's another one. Blender's, but that's a steep, like that does more than 3D modeling. That does like animations and everything. So it could get really scary. Um, so but will it blend? It will blend. <laughs> yeah. And I think, I think guys, dare I say that is all the questions. Unless I missed something. Uh, no, I think. Are we this. trash? Are we, tra are we trash? Wait, I have that one. I have that one. Are we trash? <laughs> um, yes. Well, dang, I, I, this was a great episode, Drew. Amazing information, really good stuff for anyone that's looking to get into, well, any of this really that we do. Um, really appreciate you sharing all the knowledge. Um, where can everyone find you? Uh, YouTube.com slash WITWORKS, W-I-T-T, two T's. Oh. And what about your shop? Oh, yeah. The thing that makes me money? Witworks.shop. No, no, no. Like your your shop, like your address. What's your home <laughs> What's address? What's your home uh, address? <laughs> can you give me a, Let me look a at very specific directions on how to get there? <laughs> I think it was Child's yeah. Road, right? Is that what it was? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Just to be clear, all those nice things that Pete said, he speaks for himself and himself only. <laughs> I had to listen. Very. I I was on the internet. Ways. I it was fine on the internet. I hate Drew Wit. I always bust his balls. I make nothing but jokes about him, and but I have the highest respect for him. So, hey, no. you know, true true story. Like, I I don't remember when it was, but something was happening, and y'all were saying something about me, and my somehow my dad like heard it. And my dad was like, dude, who are these people on the internet? Why don't they like you? And, <laughs> and he's like, he's like, if we didn't like you, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> he was like, what the, what the hell is this Malcolm guy? What's his problem? <laughs> <laughs> Your dad was going to fight us. <laughs> and I had to explain to him. I was like, no, they're, we're all friends. It's just fun. If Actually, they're mean, if, if they're mean, it's because they're friends. <laughs> but he's like, they keep talking crap about you. I'm like, it's because they like it's the, me. It's, it's a bit. Right. Yeah. Um, I was like, when I was looking up, I was like, which episode is he on? I'm like searching Drew Wit on our YouTube. And I forgot that one of our recent episodes was 2.8 Drews per wit was the title. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like a unit of measurement. <laughs> I forget so, what that was in reference. I don't to. even know what that was in <laughs> reference. This probably was a pre-show joke or in between a oh show my joke. Gosh. So, so dumb, but you you are always forever in our memory. I'm like, why are you saying that like you're dying? Wow. <laughs> In the eyes <laughs> of an angel. <laughs> Stay home tomorrow. Whatever you do, don't go out. Well, Dan, I know you couldn't read the uh, the patrons, but you want to say any kind words to them? Yes, I do. Uh, thanks to all of our patrons for helping us keep this business uh, churning. This is a business? Now, I was trying to be we in can, reference to you, but... Uh, you can afford uh, one oh, quarter it, truck of dirt. We, we, 
Yeah. Yes. Thank We've you. We've made to, one thank quarter shot this year. Thank you for helping us keep uh, dirt on our property. I, I appreciate <laughs> you, that. I noticed that you uh, you read the new patrons first, and if I were a patron, what I would do is I would cancel every other week <laughs> and then re up so I could keep my name in your mouth at the beginning of the bit. That's one way yes. to do it. That's just being a top tier patron with extra steps just to get your, your name True. read weekly. <laughs> uh, oh if you want to join Patreon and rejoin and rejoin and rejoin, uh, you can go over to patreon.com slash another woodshop podcast and get signed up over there. <laughs> uh, you can do what Drew said, or you can not. It, it, it's really up to you. This is America. You can do what you want. You won't. We dare you. <laughs> We dare you. Yeah. Double we dare you not dare to you. start a business. Uh, and I agree. also personally want to thank Drew. I was pretty quiet this episode because I was taking in everything that Drew was giving us. And man, very grateful. Dan's been learning how to thank nap with guys. his eyes open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a great practice. Oh episode. my gosh. I noticed it was really well, really well done. <clears throat> and well, thank you. Thanks for all the knowledge. And, uh, Hey, if people have questions, can I reach out to you? No. Okay, there you go. There you have it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so go check out Drew's channel, and uh, we hope to see you guys next week. And love you all. Bye, 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 bye. 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 Love you a long time.